Welcome to another edition of the Gaming Tailgate Podcast. I'm CDJ, joined by JB Huskers and Strangers back again. Tommy, how are I'm you? I'm still here. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> forgot it. Forgot his gamer tag already. It's been 15 <laughs> years. Oh, I don't even know if he still uses that. He might have changed it. Uh, it's still the on same. PlayStation still now. The same. Oh, yeah. I'm, full, I'm fully on PlayStation 5. So if, look for me there. Today, we want to talk about players possibly holding out of EA Sports College football. Not too long ago, on three had a couple articles talking about players potentially holding out. We had an organization, the College Football Players Association, even calling for all past, present, and future players to boycott the title until they get more money. As of now, it's rumored to speculated that they'll get around five hundred dollars a player. As far as we know, that's not been confirmed, and I don't even think they're at the stage to offer money. Uh, on three had a good article talking it's about nine different players, their thoughts on it, and to me, when I read it. Reading the article was different than what the headlines and even the subheadlines implied. And I'd like to know if you guys felt the same. When I read it, it seemed like most of the players felt like they're going to go in and good do it. It's not really a question. If they get, you know, a couple hundred bucks, they're in. General Booty from Oklahoma, he was the one that thought maybe they might get lowballed if and get 200. And I felt that he probably wasn't aware of the 500 number that was being thrown about. And then you throw in the Players Association. And with what's interesting with them, real quick, when you hear the word players association or players union, like we hear from pro sports, you get the implication that every player is involved kind of naturally in on it. I don't feel that's the case at all. They don't give out membership numbers. But of course, in their press release, one of the things is the players should they recommend should join so they don't take part in any bad deals. And I know it's not very scientific, but when you look at their official Twitter account, they only have 378 followers as of today, June 14th. So to me, to me that implica- or indicates there's not a lot of players involved in this might be more of a membership drive but let's talk about your guys's thoughts is this going to be a big issue with players holding out tommy what do you think what do you think when you read this article i thought the article was good i thought the headlines were terrible yeah i agree i mean i I, like you said i a i've never heard of this group b Mm -hmm. like you said it's not something that everybody's automatically signed in like in the nfl to play in the nfl you have to be part of an nfl pa that kind of thing this is something totally different i'm sure it's probably something they're trying to start up and this is a good way to to get headlines and get somebody to say oh i didn't even know they were out there let me look into it kind of thing so it worked because a lot of people are talking about it (laughs) exactly exactly so to me i I don't put much stock in it um i think I, i think Like you said, most players will want to get a little bit of something out of it, but at the same time, they're not going to get rich off of it or anything like that. It's going to be, you know, a month's worth of groceries or something sort of thing. Right. Um, Which at the end of the day, for most players, that's going to be plenty. I think probably a lot of them would be fine with just a copy of the game, that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, But at the same time, you're still going to have your star players that are going to think that they're better than the game. And in theory, they may hold out and say, you know, I'm worth more than, than the, you know, second string center for, for mm-hmm. Hawaii or whoever. Uh, it, it's one of those things that you're always going to have people that think they're more valuable than they are. And it's up to them to, to either hold out or, or succumb to pressure, you know, whatever they decide to do. But I think at mm-hmm. the end of the day, I think most players are going, are going to end up in the game. Yeah. It's amazing how a couple of shows ago, we talked about the same thing, same thing, worrying about this, if right. there's going to be people that, that do this or not. And hopefully those people get kind of dragged kind of like what Sam Keller and Ed O'Bannon did when they killed this game for mm-hmm. 10 years. Hopefully they, these people uh, learn or realize that this is not your avenue to make money. There's other avenues to do that in. And then hopefully they do get criticized if they decide mm-hmm. to kind of hold out for more bit because think- they, they realize that, uh, well, you can easily be replaced and edited and still be in the game when somebody else puts you in it. So to, think- to that point, mm-hmm. sorry, real quick, no, to that ahead. point about edited, my guess, and this is purely guess, never heard this from anyone. This is pure speculation. I think EA will be afraid enough to get sued that you won't be either A, you won't be able to edit those players in the game or at a minimum won't be able to share your edits with someone else. Uh, I figured with NIL it open it up more. No, I mean, that's the thing is that if you add somebody who's not in NIL, that they their likeness has not been lent to EA and you add them to the game, then that just opens up for lawsuits. So uh, I, I kind of saw similar treatment with uh, the back in the day, the uh, NCAA yeah. custom teams. They did not want to allow, like, for example, NFL or MLB logos to be on a custom team. Uh, so it, they, at, for a time at least, they were very strict about what logos you could add, and they would, you know, filter different ones out and things like that. So yeah, I imagine it. in, in this the case, they'll either have filters 
created to prevent you from creating certain players on certain teams or at a minimum just not be able to share them somehow at the same time pro wrestling for the past two generations has had create a wrestler where you could easily create someone that looks exactly like them and there's been no issue well those guys need to get better lawyers yeah they yeah, need to exactly. call out a band and get a better lawyer well <laughs> I, I, he needed a better lawyer he got like chicken feed for his settlement i think he got the money i think the regular players didn't get much i think they got about 1200 but i do think you, jb you bring up another flip side of this argument players who hold out could get heavily criticized by their own fans online and i would say there's another side could the star players lead the way we and i, I know i'm guilty of this and i've seen a lot of people online are we maybe thinking the worst of the star players isn't there a possibility some of the star players lead the way that tell their teammates, we're all going to get in this game the first year? Do they want to be the star quarterback or star player who is good enough for everything else? But when it comes to this, says, guys, I'm out. You go get your money. I'm not. Now, granted, I think the star players are going to get a little bit more just naturally. But I think there's going to be – it would not shock me on some teams we hear stories of the star players being the first ones to tell these guys when it's available, you're signing up. We're all doing this as a team. We're getting in the game. I mean, am I am I wrong? Am I being myopic here? There, I think I think there's a good chance that, that could happen. There's so many other ways to get your money when mm-hmm. you're the star mm-hmm. player. So I think they, there's mm-hmm. different battles that you need to pick and choose and realize mm-hmm. this is a unifying one where they are on a video game with their teammates and hopefully they realize that fact and, and mm-hmm. decide to, to play ball. You're always going to have some players that have parents and coaches and whoever and agents in their ear saying no you need to hold out so you can get more money because right. yeah. you're, you're better than this other guy so i mean there's going to be there's going to be leaders that try to push the whole team to join and then there's going to be the you know people that are more selfish for themselves and that, that try to hold out and uh the way i can see star players differentiating themselves is something like ultimate team I don't think every single player is going to be available in Ultimate Team, but I think, you know, your top 100 for a season or, or something like that, or at least your Heisman candidates mm-hmm. or, or something like that, they're going to get added to Ultimate Team along with, and this is, again, just a speculation on my part, but along with legends and things like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, again, I think, you know, let's say, okay, at a base player, everyone gets $500, but then if we add you into Ultimate Team, then you get, you know, uh, you know, one percent of of your sales, or you know, whoever whoever knows what right. it is. Um, I'm not From a business a financial guy. Right. Yeah, exactly. Something like that, to where yeah. they get a little cut, to where they get a little bit more than your average everyday guy, uh, just because they are that star player. I would say I haven't seen any players say they won't be in. I have seen players, uh, Mississippi State quarterback Mike Wright, formerly at Vanderbilt, transferred over. He said he would do it for twenty dollars and for free if they get a speed rating right. And Alabama cornerback Malachi Moore says, I forget how he worded it, but they said, there's no holdout. I'm going to be in the game. So I've seen more players come out and say, I'm going in versus one saying who they may not. I think there's some reservation. They want to see those numbers. But I think that kind of gets us to another point. Are we even at the point where players can sign up? This article, I wasn't a fan of the headlines. And I think it created kind of a bad game of telephone where it went from players could hold out to might hold out to are holding out. And then we even saw the term mass holdouts, which to me implies a whole different – that implies like double-digit percentage, and I don't think we're going to get that. But are they even at a point where they can sign up? Because EA and One Team Partners just announced this what maybe a month ago. Players who will be freshmen in college football the first year, let's just say CFB 25, so it all makes sense, and so I keep track of my own numbers here. They're just entering high school a senior year now. They're not going to sign with the school until December of 23 or February of 24. So you got to think those guys, that signing period is going to go through you know, early spring of next year. So I think we are a long ways off from knowing exactly what percentage of players will or will not be in the game. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm trying to work out a timeline here. And I'm thinking, you know, I see these articles and social media posts and videos, people saying players are holding out. I don't think that's the case right now. I don't think it's possible to hold out right now. Well, I was going to say, uh, they probably are already going after the upperclassmen, the bigger stars, and a lot of other guys now. Much like when you talk about Madden, then there's that period where they go after the drafted rookies. And so that's going to be the exact same thing, the exact same type of strategy they're going to do with college football is they go after the signed freshmen about about the same time as they do with the drafted rookies. It's just going to be a little 
sooner in the calendar. But again, college football always came out a month ahead too. So that is uh in, in that that timeline kind of matches up. So I think that's when they're gonna, you know, they're already they're probably already pursuing some of the uh the established guys right now. And then there's gonna be that period of time, much like in Madden, that they go after the freshmen, which would be the time that Madden goes after the rookies. Yeah, honestly, that's gonna be kind of tricky because A, I I think if anything, they're probably starting to talk to some players, but not true negotiations to just say, hey, you know, help us get some feedback here. What are your thoughts? That kind of thing. But to me, I don't think they can start signing contracts until probably end of next season uh, or end of this season, end of 2023, uh, because for one, you don't know who's coming back. For two, if somebody has a major injury, obviously you don't want them signed to a contract, that kind of thing. And and then as well, at the same time, I guess with NIL, high school players could start signing agreements. But, you know, how do you factor that in with players starting the their first college football season is fall of 2024? Mm. When are they going to be signed to agreements to be in the game and that kind of stuff? So uh, it's going to be tricky. It's uh, I think that they've probably started conversations, but nobody can even sign a dotted line today, if I had to guess. I would say the the freshmen coming in, I think it might depend on their state as well, which could be a tricky nightmare. Because I think some states allow the high schoolers to sign and some don't. So I imagine that's a lot of fun for EA to go through and figure out which players they can actually talk to. Maybe it's something that in like they create them as, you know, fake players as, as mm-hmm. freshmen or something like that until they sign uh, in, you know, in July or whatever month it is that they've come on campus. And at that point, then there's a roster update that, that pushes them into the game or something. And I would also think not a lawyer here, but I would think they would have the contract would say, if you're in the game, like if you sign this and we put you in, you get the money because if a guy transfers in the meantime, or, enters the portal and transfers down, he's not going to be in this game. They want to be responsible for giving some guy 500 bucks who transfers down. So, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. I got to think the legalese would be, if you're in, you get this, but if you're not, you know, if we don't put you in, you get nothing. Uh, right. I, I said the portal's got to be a nightmare in this situation as well. And really, you know, the, they're going to be working on rosters till, you know, this game goes out the door and we know they're going to do roster updates afterwards, but you know, that first roster that comes out could be, could be pretty rough and understandably so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Again, they're not going to have the rights to everybody on day one, I don't think. So uh, they're going to have to either do roster updates or or something. You know, it'll be curious to see how they handle it. This is an argument that I don't know. If, I think it's more of a hypothetical, but I want to run you by you guys. Uh, we see a lot of the media talking about, you know, some of these players need more or what's fair to them. And they're talking about the, the star players like Akelia Williams. Uh, you know, the star players deserve more than $500 or $570 if you count a free copy of the game hypothetically what about the flip side of that are there some players that would be overpaid at five hundred dollars and i know that some people are gonna that's gonna ruffle feathers but if they you know Caleb williams being in the game moves moves a few copies the as jb likes to say the third string center at hawaii is probably not gonna move a lot of copies so it's one of those i think the i hope the players when they look at that 500 fee they realize that you know that's for everybody across get everybody across the board in you know, and if you're a Colorado fan, you think everybody who played on your roster last year wasn't worth five hundred dollars because your coach, the coach, sure doesn't. You know, <laughs> I say that half joking. So I mean, it's one of those that I, I think it's a hypothetical that five hundred bucks for most of the players. Uh, you guys mentioned earlier, that's probably more NAL money than they've probably gotten before. I, I said it either on the last show or a couple of shows ago. It's there are other avenues to get your money. This is not the avenue to try to get your stake, especially mm-hmm. on a game that's starting from the ground up, mm-hmm. where we've seen it with the pga game i mean they're kind of struggling to sell after being dormant for a while you got to wonder i don't think ncaa is going to struggle as much as the pga game has has been to sell but you got to wonder it's been gone for so long so yeah i I think to to your point uh chris the players that are worth less so to speak they are just going to be happy just to be in a video game. Mm, I mean, this I is going to be their only chance. They're not going to go to Madden, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, so it's going to be only, they're probably their only chance to ever be in a video game. So mm. it's kind of one of those things of, you know, yeah, if, if it's $500, that's great. If it's, if it's just a free copy of the game, that's, that's just as good, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, because again, they're not going to move volumes of the game or anything like that, but mm. at the same time, it, it's, it's as a whole group that, that, 
it makes it more worthwhile. Right. If let's say you even have ninety percent of players, to me, ninety percent of the the eighty five uh, mm-hmm. per team. If you had that, then to me, that's that's a huge win that will just mm-hmm. help to sell the game, especially the first year back, mm-hmm. uh, because we've never been able to have real players in the game. And so to be able to say day one, you have real players in the game now that that's just going to, you know, a lot of people are going to go out and buy it for mm-hmm. a nostalgia and B to see how did they treat my favorite college football team. And hopefully right. that team aspect helps with getting the majority of people sign, uh, you know, hopefully that unites everybody to just want to be a part of it and not try to squeeze every last dollar they can mm-hmm. out of being appearing in this game. Squeeze your dollars. If you make it to Madden, you know, don't, don't mm-hmm. do it on the college game. Try you know, is what I'm thinking. And, mm. and if anything, it'll be, you know, those star players, like you said, they're going to get their money elsewhere. They're going to yep. get it from Nike and from, from Adidas and from, the the brand new you know Lexus lease that they get or whatever it's going to be, uh, right. I don't think I don't think a they're not going to get their money from EA they're not going to get you know tens of thousands of dollars from EA I don't think anyone will, uh, but you know it's more of just a nostalgia to be able to say I was in the first college football game that had players kind of thing or from the local sandwich shop in town a lot of those guys that's where the money I think the real money you know, yeah the money exactly. is at. it's I not- thought it was I thought it was the HVAC companies. Well, that, that, <laughs> yeah, that's the big money. Everybody needs a new HVAC at one point or another. Um, Matt Brown had brought up after the, you know, the U- so Players Association had said or recommended this massive boycott. He came out and basically said the leverage isn't there for these guys, these players, um, in part. And some of this is my take on it. But basically, if the game is successful with generic players, that tells EA, well, maybe we don't need to license everybody in the future. So maybe you better get in the game now while you can and kind of prove your worth. And if the game sells like gangbusters, then maybe next year, maybe you ask for a little bit more money or say, can we get this bumped up a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we're just talking about this is just for this game now. It it doesn't talk about the future of possibility. I mean, obviously, if you start selling Madden numbers, you're going to be able to give away more money to these people. So I think that's basic numbers right there. And hopefully, like I said, hopefully some of these people... Uh, the the top stars kind of realize that and uh, mm-hmm. and then and realize that if they are a part of this, they are going to be a part of possibly if especially if it's a major face, a major player, they're going to be a part of driving those sales for that mm-hmm. fan base. And now mm-hmm. there's a chance to down the future to possibly uh, be even better with either this game or again with Madden. So mm-hmm. there's this is just your starting point And they got to realize that this is a starting point for mm-hmm. their video game career, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And and to that point, kind of, it's almost like they, if they just keep holding their hand out for more money just from the college football game, then when it comes to Madden, they're going to be like, you were too difficult to deal with. Why do we want to give you more money now? You know, that kind of right. thing. So it's almost like, I'm not saying just do it for free, but at the same time, start a good relationship with EA, because if you're going to be a star player in the NFL, then, mm-hmm. you know, that relationship is going to be 20 years long kind of thing. Yep. One other topic to kind of add to all of this is if my speculation is correct about EA not allowing roster sharing, then at that point, the players actually have a little bit more leverage uh, to do that. Because uh, if EA is worried about getting sued, they're not going to allow roster sharing, but then they want to get those names in the game. Because if if you can't put them in the game yourself – then they're going to want you to have your Caleb Williams in the game, that kind of thing. So, uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see where all of this goes. Uh, But at the end of the day, I I think the majority of majority of the players want to be in the game. So I think we'll still get to see most of them in there. It's just those handful of holdouts that will have their uh, Barry Bonds and Bill Belichick treatment. And it's one of those things, some of those guys that, you know, if you don't get in now, I mean, you could maybe sign mid-year and get it in an update, but if you don't get in this year, historically, you're never being in this game. Yeah. This this copy of the game that's the special, the comeback year, the comeback version, I think a lot of guys, if they don't get in now, will, might regret it later on. But like I'm like you. I think most players will sign on. And much like when a lot of the schools, some of the schools said they weren't going to be in the game, it all worked out. It's one of those mm-hmm. that right now it sounds like EA's hope they're over 120 plus optimistic to get all 133 that i think in the same vein i think a lot they're going to get the vast vast majority of players you got to wonder do they have a case now that there's now that this is here do they have a case of for people putting them in the game and sharing it you know again Mm -hmm. there's all these video games that allow this and 
that's yeah, but th- this is the one that got burned though that's yeah. the yeah that's the thing yeah, this is the one that yeah. got their foot their hand slapped big time yeah yeah i see your plus point but... but now we're in a different world so it's it's like well is there now a case mm-hmm. is there you know it's an interesting thing to see i think ea is more afraid of lawsuits than most other developer uh they're, yeah. they're big enough that that people are going to go after them and and like chris said they've already been uh kind of bitten by by uh Ed O'Bannon and, and the others that uh, they probably don't want to have to go back to lo- to court over that. And there's some fans that are saying, like, if these players don't go in there, don't they know what we're capable of? We can edit them in. Well, back on PS3, guys could, I don't want to say hack it, but you could do mods and different things and access that roster file and, and share it that way. PS4, that changed with just games in general. You really couldn't share you files via USB with other users. And now with PS5, as far as I know, there's no way to go in and really mod or access files that if, if they don't add it in game, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So with that, we're going to wrap up another edition of the Gaming Tailgate podcast. Tommy, Jeremy, thanks for joining. Everyone else, thanks for watching. I'm parched. Yeah.